Hello, this is John Malsbury with Edis Research. We're creating this video to give a brief and simple example of how to use the Universal Software Radio Peripheral, or USRP, with GNU Radio. Um, now this is GNU Radio Companion, or GRC, and it's a graphical environment that can be used to create GNU Radio flow graphs. If you're not familiar with GNU Radio or the USRP, feel free to follow the links below this video to find more information. Now today we're actually just going to build a FM receiver and show how simple it is to, to create uh, software radios. So to get started we need to go get a uh, UHD USRP device or USRP block and what this does is it allows you to access the samples from the USRP and configure it accordingly. So there's a number of parameters that can be set here. Uh, for our first example we're not going get, to get into all of them but we'll definitely show them at some point in other videos. The ones that are uh, critical uh, for each application usually are the orange ones. For example, sample rate is what sets the uh, baseband sample rate that you get from the USRP after decimation. And that can be set uh, anywhere from 250 kilohertz to 25 megahertz when you're running in 16-bit mode with the USRP N200 or N210. Now for this case, it is controlled by a variable, which I'll set here momentarily to 5 megahertz. Uh, we're also going to have a uh, graphical based variable to control the frequency which I'll add shortly and I could add a variable for the gain as well but to make it simple I'll just hard code the value and the same thing for the antenna. Uh, now I am using a WBX daughter board with the N200 and it has two ports RX2 and TXRX um, so I'll just select it to be RX2 of course that's what's actually connected to the antenna outside now, as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be 5 megahertz uh, for the sample rate, so we'll set that in here. And I do need to add the variable for the frequency, which I'll move over here. And we're just going to call it freak, just like we did in the uh, UHD source. And I'll set it to a default value of 105.7 megahertz which is a valid channel for FM. Now that we're getting started, we'll go ahead and save the example before we lose any progress. And uh, we'll continue building the flow graph. Now for visualization, I'm going to include a WX GUI FFT. And this will show us the contents of the RF spectrum and will help us you know, tune the stations accordingly. Um, so some things to add here. Baseband frequency, I'm going to set it to a value of freak. So all of the values shown uh, on the FFT are relative to the frequency that we've set instead of zero hertz. Also, I'm going to add what's called a notebook feature, which will add some tabs that will make the application look a little bit neater. And I'll add that component a little bit later. Next, we're going to add a channel filter, which is uh, simply a low pass complex filter in this particular application. Remember that this is operating on both the I and Q, so it's like there's actually two filters here, each operating on a floating point number or floating point stream. So we'll set the half bandwidth of the desired channel bandwidth here, as well as the transition width. Now the transition width determines how many taps the filter will use and how quickly the filter rolls off. We'll also set this filter to perform decimation so that the entire flow graph does not need to operate at 5 megahertz because that's not necessary for the bandwidth of an FM signal. So we'll connect the source to the low pass filter and next we're going to add a wideband FM receiver um, WBFM for short. Okay and inside here the parameters are the quadrature rate which is going to be the output rate of this low pass filter or 5 megahertz divided by 20 which is 250 kilohertz and I'll actually set the audio decimation to 1 so there will be no decimation across this particular block. Instead I'm going to use a rational resampler and the purpose of this is to take the uh, sample rate which is a factor of the USRP master clock of 100 megahertz and instead set it to uh, what the sound card can operate at. So I'll connect this uh, to keep it simple, we'll say we'll decimate by 250 and interpolate by 96. Um, this can be reduced further, but uh, this is just for simple illustration. This effectively changes the sample rate to 96 kilohertz, which is what we'll set the sound card to. So a sync is uh, something where samples go into 
and we'll use an audio sync and this will actually route the samples to the sound card at the rate that we set here which will set the sound card to operate at 96 kilohertz the device name blank and it'll select the default device of your operating system um, so I can go ahead and splice the uh, demodulated audio into this uh, desktop recording I'll go ahead and create a WAV file sync as well and call this FM record sample rate is going to be 96 kilohertz like the audio sync and uh, last but not least we'll add another FFT so we can actually look at the spectrum of the demodulated audio so we can see the composite signals so we can get a, a wider bandwidth view of the composite signal I'm actually going to uh, set it to 250 kilohertz which is the output of the uh, wideband FM receiver um, and we'll also assign this to a notebook tab Now I still need to add the notebook, so we'll go ahead and do that. And what this is, again, is just a graphical feature that will add tabs and uh, make it a little easier to navigate the program. We'll have one tab called R Spectrum and another tab for uh, DMOD Spectrum. And we'll try to type this correctly. And at the moment, I don't have any plans for a third tab, so I'll get rid of that. Now once we're done uh, designing our GNU Radio Flow Graph in GRC, uh, we can actually use it to generate the Python file, which is actually what uh, GNU Radio uh, executes with. So let's change this ID so the file name is set appropriately and just give a quick check for any other things that might be missing. Doesn't look like there's any errors, otherwise we would see red. So we'll go ahead and generate the flow graph and we see that no errors have been produced and it's generated fmexample.py and I'll go ahead and execute the flow graph okay and it seems to be working I'll turn averaging on to help clarify the display a little bit um, you can see a number of uh, broadcast FM stations in the spectrum here and we can go ahead and change the frequency that we're looking at something lower uh, let's say 95 megahertz actually and there's additional stations but let's go back to some of the clean ones that we saw here uh, so again this is the R spectrum you can clearly hear that we're listening to a signal that's being demodulated by uh, the, this block here and of course filtered and resampled etc um, it's also helpful to go ahead and look at the demod spectrum so you can see some of the contents of the uh, FM composite signal. So here you have the mono signal, a pilot tone uh, that, that gives you a reference for the uh, first subcarrier here. This is the RDS signal that's used to transfer digital information like the name of the song and then there's some other functions in the spectrum as well. Um, that's a pretty quick example of how to use the USRP with GRC. Um, and it shows that things are pretty flexible and this graphical environment allows you to create things pretty quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at edis.com. Uh, and again, if you're unfamiliar with any of this, feel free to look at some of the links below this video. Uh, thank you for your time and I look forward to showing you more examples with the USRP.